Hello and welcome to Library Drawing Party. Today we're going to be drawing these beautiful geese. To get started, we're going to be using our number two pencil. I'm going to be using a slightly thicker pencil just so that you'll be able to see a little bit clearer. You can go ahead and use a number two pencil at home. And first we're going to position the geese. So to do this, I'm just going to use straight lines. So you're going to want to do this really lightly just just to get an idea of where we want the body to go so i'm drawing a line for the body and then i'm going to draw a line at a 90 degree angle or just about for the wings and this will help give us an idea of where we want to place our geese so i have my first two geese placed and then i want one almost in the center and then another one on the opposite side this will keep it from getting too large because it's easy for one geese to be to be much longer than the other one all right, I'm going to start with this goose. So I'm working on the wings first. And I don't want to get all of the details just yet, but I do want to start placing the head. So the head has like a teardrop shape with the neck. And then there is... And there's a half circle for the body. And almost a square shape for the back feathers. And you can see there's a bit of a curve for the wing. And let's work on this goose. You're going to want to draw that teardrop shape for the head, and then a thin neck, and then a half circle for the body, and another slightly larger half circle below, and that it's almost a fin shape or a goldfish. Now, this wing is an interesting angle I think the proper term is foreshortened because you only see the front so like if you're looking at the hand you see a full hand but this would be a foreshortened hand And then let's draw the wing. It's, there's a bit of a curve and then it goes into a sharp edge and it, it comes down almost all the way down to the first goose that we worked on. Let's draw next goose this one has a tip around here but this one has a curve and an angle around here then let's draw the half circle for the body and the back feathers the neck and the teardrop face I'm going to shorten the belly a bit and then we have 
for our last goose. You do the head, the neck, then the wings, and there's this big half circle for the wing. Which comes up above the middle goose on the back wings the body and back wing then at this point before we get any more detail we're going to take a step back and see how the proportions look from far away now every goose in nature is going to look a little different so it's okay if yours look a little different than mine. I'm going to erase those initial markings that we used for our placement. It's okay if you don't get them totally erased because we're going to be drawing on top of them. But this way we can focus on our shading without having to worry about the lines. And next, let's work on the wings. They all have, they almost look like fingers, the edge of the wings. There's very defined wings tips. So I'm going to do those feathers first on each of the birds. This way I can get the values to be about the same because we're not going to be adding any color to these birds. It's just going to be black and white, so it's going to, our shading is going to be very important. So I wanted that to be the darkest part of the wings. And I want some shadow underneath for this wing and some underneath the body here. And then a bit the inside of that wing. And then let's draw a line. So we want the lines to come from the back to the front. Some are going to be diagonal, some are going to be horizontal. Then I want the top part of the wing be the darkest I'm going to really emphasize that and it gets lighter as it gets closer to the body the feathers get closer to the body. Then I'm going to work on the back feathers. So they are also very dark. And then before we work on the head, let's work on body so I'm gonna put a bit of shading on the bottom and then I want the middle to be gray I want the there to actually be some white pieces by the back feathers so we don't want to put too much color here or we don't want to shade too much of there I want that to stay pretty white. It'll be a nice contrast between the tips. And 
You also want to make sure you're getting the muscle. So there's some muscle by the wings. Okay, and then let's work on the head. So I'm going to just draw in that neck. This is what's really going to define our geese. And then for the teardrop, we're going to have a white stripe for the eyes. And then you can press the full weight of your pencil down for the rest of the head. And then you can also take a black marker and go over the head and really bring out that nice deep dark tones. Take a step back. When you're happy with your geese, you can make sure that there's no more smudges on the page. You're going to want to make sure your hands are clean at this point. Because we're just going to clean up our canvas so that we can paint our watercolor background. Now for a watercolor background, I'm going to be painting water onto the page first because we're going to be doing a wet on wet application. I'm using a big brush to start and then I'm going to use a, a smaller brush to get some of these details in. It's important that when you're painting the water on that you don't paint over your birds. Because the paint will seep wherever there's water. So this is actually a good way to prevent the watercolor from going onto our geese by painting it ahead of time. We'll have a bit more control when we're trying to do our flat wash. So a flat wash is when we get the color to be flat. So it should be all the same color as our goal. Now since it's a night sky, if it has some, or a twilight sky, if it has some variation, that's normal. But this is a good chance for us to practice doing a flat wash. Now that my canvas is wet. I'm going to go back and wet my brush and take some blue. And I'm going to save some room for the moon. I'm going to paint around the moon and then I'm going to start adding in my color. And it's important to work quickly while everything is wet so that we can 
spread the color out and get that nice even tone and see how I accidentally painted over the, the goose and it didn't the color didn't take that is because of our wet on wet technique it helped prevent the color from seeping in to the rest of our bird. I'm using the big brush as much as I can. So it'll help us apply the color more evenly. You don't need a lot of water on your brush because there's already water on the canvas but you do want your brush to be wet. So make sure it's just damp. Okay, once you have the majority of the paper covered, I'm even gonna paint some faint lines over the moon. And switch to my smaller brush, wet it, add in a bit more blue, and then I'm going to add the blue to catch all of the details that were difficult to get with our thick brush. Now since we're working with twilight, we do want it to be a nice dark sky. So we want to add in a lot of pigment. And since it's a peaceful night, you want to smooth out all of our lines. We don't want to see too much texture in the sky because we have all of the beautiful texture of our geese, which we want to be the focal point of our drawing. You can also try doing a wash that starts from dark and goes to light or goes from light to dark. Or you can have the geese flying into the sunset and have many different colors. It's up to you what color you want your geese to be flying up into the sky. And also add a bit of purple for some visual interest. Mix that in with our blue. Also help bring out the moon.
And there you have it. That's our geese. Thank you for joining us in this week's library drawing party. We have library drawing parties every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And keep being creative.